New questions today about a Florida lawmaker's unique approach to trying to curb gun violence. If she gets her way, anyone who wants to buy bullets will have to sit through anger management classes. This is the brainchild of Democratic State Senator Audrey Gibson. You'd have to take a two-hour course and then show a certificate of completion before you can buy ammo. Criticism from gun rights advocates already piling up. Dr. Keith Lablo is a member of our Fox News Medical A team and has some thoughts on this. So she says, Doc, that uh, people are just more impatient today than they used to be. And she cites road rage as an example and says they need to be slowed down and have their rage checked before they can be entrusted with with deadly mechanisms such as guns and ammo. Your thoughts? Well, uh, she's wrong in so many ways that I'm not sure where to begin. But first of all, this notion that a two-hour uh, experience is going to impact someone with an impulse control disorder uh, who might shoot someone because they're mentally ill is the reason we're in the bad shape we are in the mental health care system from listening to people like this who make no sense. I mean, this is a state senator. I can't believe she was elected. Secondly, the bottom line is if you're going to do this, if you're going to have the state as parent for anyone who wants to buy bullets, how about state as parent for anyone who's going to buy alcohol? Because surely she would understand that more violence is committed under the influence of alcohol than by handguns. So I guess she would have a prescription for Americans who drink, and perhaps she would have a prescription for Americans who drive, since car violence, especially drinking and driving, is also uh, a scourge uh, in, in this country. But the bottom line is that's a personal responsibility issue. It's not her decision whether uh, people buy bullets, where they buy a car, where they drink alcohol, or it shouldn't be. I know that you believe, uh, as we watch this debate play out, as, as a psychiatrist, you look at this and you say, look, there are lawmakers out there who genuinely, sincerely are trying to address the violence that we've seen in this country, uh, perpetrated by, by individuals who, in some instances, choose guns as, as their weapon. But I know you believe there are other politicians out there who have different motives, who, who you say want to posture and just make noise. What do you mean by that? And which category does she fall into in your judgment? What I mean is that, look, we, uh, we, had, we need real solutions to the very real problems that face us. When we talk about Aurora, Colorado, or we talk about Newtown, Connecticut, we're talking about violence committed by mentally ill people in a nation in which the mental health care system has all but dissolved. We need to rebuild it. Then we're faced with grand standards like this state senator from Florida who just want to make noise. They just want to be noticed. And so what does she say? The way to end uh, violence committed with guns, which, by the way, is often committed by people who are mentally ill, is to give them a two-hour mini-course if you're buying bullets. That'll solve it. Now, why wouldn't she be laughed out of office? Why don't Americans find that kind of fiction morally repugnant that she would take us for fools, for people who are going to invest in that, that's her idea. She's an elected official, and that's what she's here to tell us from the state house. That's an embarrassment. You know, earlier this week we had a rape survivor on the program named Amanda Collins, and she had testified before the Colorado legislature on her belief as to why students need to be able to have concealed carry on campuses in Colorado. She was the victim of a rape at, in uh, Nevada. And she had a concealed carry permit, but she wasn't allowed to take it on campus, and that's where she got raped. So she gave this heart, heartfelt testimony before the Colorado State Legislature. And a state senator named Evie Hudak said the following to her, Doc. I want to get your reaction. I just want to say that, actually, statistics are not on your side, even if you had had a gun. The Colorado Bra Coalition Against May Gun Violence that, says that just wait. for every... For every one woman who used a handgun to kill someone in self-defense, 83 were murdered by them. Respectfully, Senator, you weren't there. I know, without a doubt in my mind, at some point I would have been able to stop my attack by using my firearm. He already had a weapon of his own. He didn't need mine. What do you make of that? Well, what I make of that is whether the data, and it may, support the fact that when you draw a firearm that you put yourself in harm's way in another way that doesn't mean that you don't have a firearm it might mean that we should train people to use them better and to be more expert at using them it also neglects a basic fact it's not up to 
this representative, this government official, to make a decision for every woman in America. This is the kind of state as parent that just drives me, you know, t you know, to great anger because the bottom line is who who suggested to this representative that she ought to make the decision for every potential rape victim in the country about how and when and why they defend themselves. And, and who anointed her to that? In Florida, this state senator we've been discussing, Audrey Gibson, she said her idea about you know anger management classes before you can buy ammo. She says it's about getting people to think about how much ammunition they really need, and that we've heard that from so many lawmakers about how this is a discussion in which ultimately it would be the state that would decide how much protection you need or don't need. I'll exactly. give you the last word, Doc. Hudak and Gibson should call each other and congratulate one another on this. They sent out a message of disempowerment to people uh, by the hundreds of thousands or more. They told people who want to defend themselves and have autonomy that they must be mentally ill. And they told women that if they have it in mind to do that, rather than getting the requisite training to use their firearms properly to prevent rape, that they ought to just, I guess, live through it, try to survive it, because it's going to happen. How did these people get elected? Dr. Keith Ablow, always great getting your perspective. Thank you. Thanks, and I want to tell our viewers that we invited the state senator, Aubrey Gibson, on the program today. She wasn't able to make it, but she is welcome to come on anytime. Up next. A